20th. The 20th Lancaster Archery Classic from the Spooky Nook Sports Complex here in Pennsylvania. And that's a good look at the Lancaster Archery Supply trailer that's in here and was hosting all these people. Never a short line at that. Now we're live in the finals venue for what is a fantastic shoot up and one of the most popular classes in all of archery. Definitely one of the most popular classes here on a Saturday. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White. Sitting alongside me is Matt Zernzak. And Matt of the pusharchery.com. It is time. It's time. No sights, no stabilizers, no release aids. Anything could happen. It's like in the title, isn't bear it? Bearbow time. It's bearbow time. And women's bearbow is on deck. Now it has been a fantastic couple of days of shooting here in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. How has the Barebow crowd been? Because you are in touch with everybody. Yep. And how have they enjoyed this tournament? We are amped up. We are jazzed up. Best Barebow tournament of the year. This is the big show. This is great. So excited. Can't believe we're here already again. And of course, this is the Lancaster Archery Classic. And when you look at it, we've had a full day of shooting. Let's take a look at the schedule. So we opened up the day at 1 o'clock Eastern time with some compound classes. We had the senior the women's masters, women's masters. Then we went to some recurve youth and then the recurve open. And now here we are for the finale of the day with a cash bar <laughs> right on the spot, <laughs> women's barebow. Now, Matt, go ahead and tell us a little bit about how this qualifying is going to work. Yep. So due to the amount of women that entered, we get the top four qualify for the show, for the big stage here. Uh, ranked uh, ties are broken by 11s. We have a bottom-up format, which means number four plays number three, winner plays number two, and then the winner of that plays number one for the podium. Yeah, so you can come in here in fourth place and walk out as the champion. Boy, it is going to be an exciting day. The crowd here, almost every seat is packed, and even on one side, it's just standing room only. Can't wait. Well, now it's time to welcome our athletes to the field of play. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what time is it? Barbell! We, we, we got a packed house. We got a packed house and we're ready to rock. All right. Connor's calling the arrows. PJ, take it away. All right, we don't want to wait any longer. Let's get right to the action here. From Torino, Italy, our number four qualifier, Elisa Medico. She's been shooting for four years. She is the Italian champion. And our third place qualifier from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Ava Jones. Ava has two 3D world records. Good look at Ava Jones from Bowling Green, Kentucky. And one of the things you're going to find in Barebow is people at the top, not necessarily lifetime shooters. These first two shooters we have, one has three years experience, the other has four years experience, as Elisa Medico from Italy has. And of course, we're going to see the number two, number one, who have more years experience. Oh, yeah. But Matt, it's pretty incredible to see this, the surge of shooters coming into the fold in Barebow. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of new faces this year, not only in women's, but also in men's divisions as well. And this is a really cool matchup because we have a 15-year-old going up against Eliza, who is a veteran. She has a lot of experience in the world archery um, side of the organization. So field archery, outdoor 3D, um, a lot of world archery experience, those bigger tournaments. And, uh, you know, Ava, is not so she doesn't she <laughs> she does a lot of 3d a lot of asas but you know this is our her, her big showing here coming out of nowhere just an unbelievable archer all right so they're shooting single spot targets at 18 meters down range and the first arrow is fired and tell us about the innermost ring in the middle innermost ring in the middle is worth 11 points here at the lancaster classic typically that's only counted as 10 points and an x for tie breaks but one thing that's unique here at the Classic is we do count it as an extra point. It makes it a little bit more exciting. 
And Elise's arrow just to the left of her arrow is that single 1.5 centimeter dot. What's that? That is the 12 ring. So there is a little button on the front of their platform that if needed, you can step on that and call a 12 and aim for that small white dot. And that would be worth 12 points. This is bearable competition. And there was just an arrow shot in the yellow and the crowd went crazy. That's right. There we Why? Go. <laughs> yep, that's right. So uh, essentially we are using the tip of our arrow to aim and you'll see us do a process called string walking where we come down the string. We're using marks on our tab. So for any Olympic recurve or compound hey. archers out there, the back of our tab is like a sight tape for a single pin slider sight. So we're actually changing the launch trajectory of our arrow by coming down the string and she's sighting using the tip of the arrow as a single pin sight and covering hey. up the gold and executing. And what's incredible about Barebow is when we get to the end of four ends of competition, sometimes we have tie scores. Yes. But let's get to PJ Riley, who's with the athletes. Elisa, how are you doing? Coming all the way from Italy, is this your first time on the classic big stage? Yes, it is. And how does it feel to be up there? Uh, it's beautiful. It's a new experience. Uh, you are all beautiful. <laughs> So back home in Italy, are they aware of the Berbo experience at the Lancaster Classic? Yeah. <laughs> Berbo! Berbo, there you go. <laughs> look, something to take note of as we look at the recap here, we're going to see some shots from, from Ava Jones, uh, is if you come to one of these tournaments, whether you're shooting it or whether you're a fan, Every now and then, whether you're at full draw or not, someone's just going to yell out Barebo, <laughs> and right. your job is to respond, Barebo! <laughs> That's right. It's the call sign of this class. There's no doubt about it. So we're coming out of the first end here. Uh, you know, they're shaking off the nerves a little bit. The, the goal of this first end was to come out and shoot good, strong shots, get a feel for the lighting. Since we're not using any rear peep sight, we don't have a sight on the front of our bow, what we're lighting is very important for us. So. One of the big things in barebow is the arrow diameter that we're using. Some archers you'll see using skinny diameter arrows like Eliza here. Uh, they're, they're said to aim easier because of the smaller diameter. Uh, but the trade-off there is if you want to use a large 23 diameter arrow, which is the largest diameter we can use in barebow, um, your sight picture, your arrow might be seven ring to seven ring in your sight picture, where a skinnier diameter arrow might be nine ring to nine ring. So a, a smaller diameter arrow. That's a great shot by Ava there. Just strong execution. I really like her follow through there. Very, very linear. Her hand comes right across her face. Now, of course, if you're new to archery and you're used to watching Seven. Olympic recurve, the thing that's missing, a couple things. Number one, a sight, so you don't see it sticking off the bow. And of course, stabilizers. That's now, right. we, don't, we don't see long stabilizers, but we do see weight being able to be added Absolutely. to the bow. In bare bow, you can add weight below and above the grip as you see fit. You just have to have your bow fit through an inspection gauge. That is a metal ring that is 12.2 centimeters in diameter, which is the diameter of it, the gold on a 50 meter target. Ah. And it just kind of snakes up through there. And so you'll see some really interesting weight configurations we'll talk about during the next end. All right, and from the scoring perspective, if you look at the upper part of your screen and you see that eight asterisks, what that's telling you is that that is an arrow in question. It could be a nine. Let's get back down to PJ. Is this your first time shooting at the Classic? No, I came last year. Came last year as well. I saw you've been shooting for three years. What made you decide to get into Barebow? Uh, I started shooting mass, and then when we went to ASA, I started shooting that. And it's all these people behind you too, right? Yeah. Have you ever experienced anything like this in the Barebow you shot last three years? Pretty cool, isn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, folks, let's give it up for these ladies. After two ends, we have a full nine, 48. All right, looking at the recap from Medico, um, Jones had mentioned NASP. Can yes. you tell us what that is, Matt? That is the National Archery in the Schools program where they are using standardized equipment to get the youth of America introduced to this wonderful sport of archery. Yeah, and bare bow. Having bare bows is the key to it. That's right. For a lot of those student athletes. Absolutely. We have a three point game here coming into the third end. So let's revisit this weights. Uh, so the inspection gauge is a metal ring. It's 12.2 centimeters inner diameter. And so you can slide it up your bow. With your string off the bow, I would imagine. Yeah, right? but the, the, the ring has a slit in it that you can actually oh. 
okay. break through the string. Okay. Um, and so during inspection, as long as your bow fits through that ring, you're going to be legal. And if we take a look at Eliza's uh, weight configuration here, she's using a gillow riser, and you'll see those hammer weights out there. So those hammer weights, if you think about snaking a metal ring, you can kind of jockey it left and right as you're snaking up the bow. So it's a really creative way to add as much weight as you possibly can and still get that ring to go and snake the whole way up the bow. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. And so since we don't have stabilizers, we're trying to increase the weight of our bow. These are essentially stripped down Olympic recurves. You can see 25 to 29 inch metal risers. Um, and a lot of us bare bow archers, we use specific bare bow risers. So these are risers that are designed with different weight distributions, knowing that we can't add stabilizers to it. The bow might be designed and balanced a little bit differently. And there are some large companies and a lot of smaller companies that are around that are doing those Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. We have a lot of great uh, kind of grassroots companies within the bare bow community that comes out with uh, really cool risers that I'm sure we'll see during the men's division. Uh, but we also have big hitters like Hoyt. 12 was called. Seven just oh, and seven just low. Man. Going for that 12. And I like that move because this is the third end of four. Yes. And so the Italian decided, hey, I'm going to go let's for go. it. I don't, let's go. Yeah. You know, it's bearable. Anything could happen. Here's PJ. It's funny. Uh, tell us about your equipment there. I see you got your Gelo shirt on. Tell us about that. They're big supporters of Barbo, obviously. Uh, yes. Uh, um, got Gelo riser, Gelo limbs there, the gold medal, GTL. Yes. I find very well with this. Uh, Vittorio and Michelle, they, I don't know if they let anybody in Italy in shoot a recurve other than Gelo. <laughs> <laughs> eh? See, uh, there is other. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for going for that 12. If you'd have hit that, I guarantee you the, rip, the Raptors would have fallen in. Without question. So Jones with a 77 to 71 advantage in our final end of competition. It's a cumulative scoring average here. So once they, you know, this is going to be the final three. That's it. But Greg, you know, this is barebow. This is bare bow close, Anything. you know. Any other, any other class, Olympic recurve or open compound, game's over. But in bare bow, anything can happen. Six points is nothing coming into a final end. So Ava here, she just needs to run her shot. She's been grouping well. She's put up some great points. And here we go. Let's watch this last end. Wouldn't be surprised if Medico just goes for the 12. A little, little fast there, but yeah. she sweeped out at nine there. That's a great shot. She just needs to keep the pedal down here. Do uh, barebows have clickers as well? Barebows do not have clickers, which makes it another difficulty. So there's some archers that are using the aim to trigger their shot, and some archers are using um, different features on the bow, whether they're pulling a feather to their nose or they're doing something else to help trigger their shot and keep that aiming panic away. Today. These are good shots by Ava. I mean, look at Ava's a little group high. in general. Yeah. Just a really, really Absolutely. solid group. Nothing outside that eight ring. Just a little one out. She needed that. Wow. Okay. Okay, so Ava just needs to put a good shot on here. Just needs to get keep it redden in to comfortably keep this lead. Let's yep. See what she does here. Great shot. Beautiful. Great, Great shot. All right, 12 is called for medical. It's not going to be enough, but hopefully she hits it. It's be that would be a great exit. All right. All right. Ava Jones. There you go. And this is a shoot-up match. So basically, Ava Jones, after official scoring comes in, looks like it's going to advance, guaranteeing her a podium spot. And fourth will go to the Italian Medico. Here's BJ. Uh, Elisa, I once heard someone say in Barbo, you might as well step on that 12 every time. Because it's Barbo, you might hit it accidentally. Why not call it? Okay, so that is the end of our first match. Our scores are official. Ava Jones takes this match 103 to 97. <laughs> Elisa Medico is our fourth place finisher. She's gonna take home $500. Congratulations, Elisa.
All right. Let's bring out our number two seed here. No stranger to the classic finals field from Edsbyn, Sweden, Lena Bjorklund. Lena is our defending champ in women's barebow. Bjorkland, an absolute stud Lena. in Darabo. Man, absolutely. She is no stranger to the stage. Absolute dominant performance last year. I don't know if you all remember this. If not, please go back and watch the 2023 <laughs> Women's Barebo Finals. She steps out and throws a 31, 30, 29, 33 to <laughs> take it last year. It was incredible. Just absolutely epic. So I can't wait to watch this match. What a, what a disparity. Again, 15-year-old <laughs> Ava Jones <laughs> going up against the, the absolute giant in this uh, female division. Unbelievable. So let's see what she does Lena here. Lena Bjorklund with 33 years of shooting experience. Lena got to, to catch up with her a little bit prior to. All right, that's a great good scout arrow. Again, coming out here, check the lighting. They have lighting back there on the practice range for these finalists. They try to mimic this as much as possible, but again, we're not using sights. So arrow reflections on the arrow tip will change your impacts. Oh, and Ava responds. This is going to be a match. I can't wait for this. Let's see what Lena can do right here. There we go. Lena says that nothing's really changed too much. Uh, she has better form than last year, if you can even believe it. Wow. She says she's more stable at full draw, and her aim looks no. better. And <laughs> Ava is stepping up to this challenge. Lena's third arrow here. Oh, no, she didn't like that. That is very uncharacteristic. And guys, this is not a set system here at the Lancaster Classic. This is cumulative, so that six is going to hurt. Ava just needs to put a good, strong shot here. And she did. Yeah, That's a good. great group. Wow. So as, as we, yeah, let's get to PJ real quick. Archie Classic stage. Thank you very much. Did you find your picture up there on one of those banners? No, where is it? 2023, there you are, top left probably behind that light for you. You want to be up there again, don't you? I'd love to. <laughs> so you come all the way from Sweden. What is it you love about the Lancaster Archery Classic? As I said last year, can't you give me a tricky one? <laughs> we want to hear it. Uh, let's see, English. The hospitality, the barebow community, everybody sharing. There you go. That's what we wanted to hear. Quick equipment repair there. All right, after our first end, we have Ava Jones, 27, Lena Bjorklund, 24. That was some great English. That was some great English. Lena, I caught up with her, with her before the match, and she was saying, are they going to be sticking the microphone in our face again this year? <laughs> uh, that's so great. So this will be interesting, because Lena had an equipment issue that she passed back to her um, fiancé, Eric Johnson, who will be coming out in the men's division, also no stranger to the final stage. So this will be interesting, because that's a mental mess up, right? That, that's, mm -hmm. that has the potential to, to needle into your brain. So she just needs to run a super strong it shot here. 12, Okay, maybe should have stepped on that button. Yeah, you was, <laughs> that was what PJ was saying. Yeah, look at even Lena had a little bit of a smile on that one. That's right. You can see Lena has about an inch and a half crawl there down the string to get her, her uh, trajectory leaving the bow to get hitting the gold when she puts the tip of her arrow on the gold. Now, the only thing about that arrow for Jones is if she wanted to, with the next two arrows to call the 12, obviously she only can, one arrow she left. Can it's doing a little that, crowded right. down there. Ava's uh, groups are starting to open up here just a little bit. She's start, starting to hit low. She might might have realized that she was grouping a little high. Maybe she went down the string and maybe added a little bit to her crawl. 
But there is an adjustment. So the tab, you'll see Lena or you'll see Ava here making a crawl down the string, sliding her tab down, looking at the marks on her tab, just like a sight tape. And so we do have the ability, if we're grouping high, we can come down the string, maybe one more stitch, crawl down the string just a little bit more. And that works. And there it was. <laughs> nice little adjustment there. And that's going to keep the pressure on here. That is wow. what Lena needed. This is the match we've been waiting for. And super exciting here. Let's go to PJ. Ava, so back home in Bowling Green, do you have a barebow scene like this at all? What is the barebow scene? Tell us about that. There's not very many shooters. There's a couple for S38, but that's about it. That's about it. So you've been up here now, you're in your second match. Are you feeling more comfortable or is it just still nerves? Nerves. <laughs> nerves. <laughs> All right. Well, you seem to be handling it well. Currently, we have confirmed we have a tie score. 53-53. Heading into... Yeah, so we have two ends left in this match, 53-53. Yeah, they upgraded it. Lena was sitting at 52, and they went down, and the scores got updated. So we have a tie match, last end. I mean, this is so exciting. Oh, no, I'm, this is the second. Yeah. This is the third end. Yeah, yeah. We, third, we're, third, we're end. third end. We got another. We got the show goes on, right? It goes on <laughs> and on and on. That's right. When we have so Barebow, good. we're going to have eight matches for you. That's right. Men's Barebow, we're going to have... Uh, seven, seven matches. Seven matches. Yes. Seven matches. Eight athletes How competing. It it's going to be great. So Lena Bjorklund starts off the first end with a 24, and then the second end to 29. Yep. Ava Jones, who you mentioned groups, kind of open up a little bit. That's right. There, the first two arrows. Starts off with a 27, but a 26. That's right. So yep. now, with you talking about the string walking and what uh, a well-coached Ava Jones is able to do. That's right. Come out of the box with a 10, but 11's, okay. 11's going to be. Let's see it. Let's see what this 15-year-old can do. So Ava Jones has, uh, in Barebow, since we're using the tip of our arrow to aim, uh, when we make our crawl and we have that up against the target, there's a couple different approaches. You can what, uh, do what they call a lollipop hold, because the arrow uh, shaft kind of runs right up to the bottom of the yellow, so you're, the archer is seeing the whole yellow in their sight picture, and the crest of the top of their arrow is right at the bottom of the yellow. And Ava doesn't do that. That's very popular. Or cutting the yellow with the top of our arrow. Those, uh -huh. those two are very common. Ava what does what we call an eclipse hold. So she's actually covering up eight ring to eight ring. She's getting the diameter of her arrow concentric with the eight ring. So she actually can't see the gold as her arrow is floating. Oh, interesting. And she executes her shot. Almost like a compound shooter who runs a, a dot but, on yeah, their scope that's that right. covers up the entire yellow. That's right. Yeah. Ava's stepping up here. Let's see if Lena can keep the pressure on. Tied game, come third end. That's what we needed. There we yeah. go. Tie game. Neck and neck. Let's see what Ava does here. It's too close to jump on that 12 button. Nine. Oh, baby. That is great. That's the arrow she group. needed to put on there. Such a great group. Let's see what Lena does here. Nine to tie. Nine. There it is. <laughs> this is what we want, baby. This is exactly this what is we it. want. This is it. Oh, man. Unofficially 81 to 81 with three <laughs> arrows apiece. Only yes. one end to go to decide who's going to advance to shoot against our number one seed. And listen, I don't want to uh, ruin the surprise, but it is uh, a very popular Fon Girard. Fon Girard. Coming up, and that's who one of these archers is going to face, but guaranteed podium at this point. Good pairing there, we'd like to see that. All right, there it is. Tied match heading into our fourth and final end, 81-81. Does it get any better than a tie match in the last end in Berbo? I don't think so. If you think about how many factors are involved in getting an air, even at 18 meters or 20 yards downrange, with string walking and how you aim, and then the size of the target, there's so many have, variables. Yeah, to have two ends back to back all tied up <laughs> is pretty incredible. In it is incredible. 
It absolutely is. So no clickers. We don't have any let off on our limbs. Yeah, just holding don't. the whole weight of the bow. Typically we're in that 35 to 44 pound range for indoor. And Ava steps up and shoots a 10-9 line. Let's see what Lena can do here. Great execution. Wow. Here we go. We got a game. We got a game. Ava just needs to stay cool, calm, and collected and repeat what she did last end. Great tempo. I tell you what, you can see, you know when Ava's going to throw it out into the red because her, her shot tempo is a little fast. Uh, those two last arrows have been just really nice tempo. Nine. Lena not happy with that. She's, she is aiming hard for that 10. She knows she needs 10s. We got a one point game. Ava has a nine star, so it could be upgraded to a 10. Eight. Oh, maybe a bounce that was out a bounce there. Out. I am pretty oh, sure I man. heard that. Absolutely. We could even hear it out of our headset. She might have broken a knock. Here we go. Arrow. Nine. Oh. All right, so that arrow that, call, that might. Well, I think Lena's going to have this. Yeah, I think so. Be a one-point victory or a two-point victory. It's a relief on Lena's face. <laughs> I love if it. You what a great think, moment. Yeah, if you don't think Lena takes the Lancaster Arc Classic seriously, <laughs> there's... He cooled down a little bit. Yeah. Boy, I'd love to see you pull out of that arrow, and I'm looking at that knock and to see if that knock looks like they broke. Score put down. Let's see what that. That is going to be. There you go. Knock. Yeah. All right, two point. So we are going to have a 110-108 victory. All right. So 110-108 victory for Lena Bjorklund over Ava Jones. So Jones will finish in third place. And now we are going to see a match of women's barebow titans. That's it. A repeat. Lena versus Fawn in the finals. Encouraging words from Lena Bjorklund, no doubt David Jones. Understanding the 15-year-old skill at this point and the fact that Ava Jones pushed Bjorklund all the way to the edge. Hey, for the Barebow crowd, I want to further explain something. The 12 ring should always be in play. One end per, one end per match, one end per match. But there's no reason not to call it. There's absolutely zero penalty for calling a 12. So encourage your people to call it every end that they can. One end per match. One arrow per, per end. Excuse me. One arrow per end. Thank you, Connor. You're welcome. <laughs> Lena says she's ready to go to the bar now, but her business is not done here yet. I know this place is gonna get loud now. From Martinsville, Ohio, Fawn Gerard. Go, okay. Fawn Gerard. Well, no stranger to the stage, Fawn Gerard. And we'll see what kind of arrows she's shooting because, uh, you know. I I'm guessing 23s. 23s <laughs> is the max, not 27 <laughs> diameter. That's right. 23s is the max. That's right, Fawn Gerard. So uh, if we go back a few few years, Fawn has made the elimination rounds every year she's competed here at the Lancaster Classic, even when the men's and women's division were combined. Mm -hmm. um, when the women's division got split out and now we get their, uh, our own Barebow finals like we're seeing here, the winners of that have been Lena, Aaron Hayob, Lena again last year. So is this Fawn's year coming out in first seed? She's open, so 
she's going to give it everything she's got and every bit of emotion she has is going to be laid out right there Here we go. 18 meters down range very take taking her time very accurately making this crawl yeah. her goal here is to shoot a very strong scout arrow to see what the lighting's doing with her impact and then we go from there she made the choice to bump lena off the left platform and there we go she comes out swinging Right. Lena this year is, is using a new riser. So is Fawn. So Lena is running a new Gillo GF, and Lena calls it her girlfriend. Ah, nice. <laughs> That's what she's named her bow. And Fawn has made the change from a Hoyt XD to the new Hoyt GMX riser two weeks ago. Also added a the new Hoyt bare bow weight. I uh, see that right out front. Yeah. Yep. It's a very disc. cool, innovative designed weight for us bare bow archers that stays real close to the riser so we can fit it through the ring, but it also is off-centered, so you can twist the weight left and right to help balance that bow uh -huh. and get it jumping straight out of your hand, just like you like it. Very interesting. No. Oh, that's a great opening Would end. Would that also help with torque if you have natural torque? Absolutely, yeah, you can offset, offset it. it to the left or the right to, to counteract that Ooh. torque. Nine. Oh, it looks like a, maybe a bounce out. Great yeah. groups, this is a great, great opening group. end. Tied up. She smashed that knock, no question. Let's get to PJ for some great entertainment from Fawn Gerard. Fawn, earlier today you were telling me that this barebow crowd is just a little bit too loud for you and you wish they would calm down. I was wondering what that was about. How many classics have you shot? I think this is my seventh or eighth. Seventh or eighth, all right. And your most memorable one was the one where you were sitting down here and puking in the trash cans. And then slept by the trash can back there, yeah. There you go. A Fawn Gerard classic experience. All right, so after one end, we have a tie match. 27, Recap on Fawn and how she was able to get her 27. What are you seeing? That's right. So she's running at 8, 9, 10. Uh, and Lena got there with straight nine. So same score at the end, but we got there differently. And what they were referencing there was a few years back, Fawn came down <laughs> with a horrific flu yeah. uh, to the point where she was at the practice range. She couldn't shoot her bow. She couldn't stand up. She was sleeping back here waiting for her time to go out on the stage, throwing up in the trash can, and she still steps out and puts on a performance. She was feeling pretty bad that year. But that, that's the competitor inside her, right? Oh, 100%. 27-27 after the first end. Here we go. This is the match we've been wanting. That's a great arrow here. Let's see how Lena responds. <laughs> there we uh, go. <laughs> toe to toe. <laughs> toe now, to do toe. you think that it was a bit of a risk for Fon Girard with only two weeks on the bow, like to, to change bow two weeks before a huge tournament like this? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, she's a, she's obviously a veteran in the sport, so a lot of these top bareback archers, even all pro archers, they can throw different stabilizers, different limbs on their bows, and as long as they're running their shot, they're going to be ooh, they're going to be seven. shooting whatever groups the best for them. So there's no there's no reason why Fawn would try new equipment. Her groups open up, and then her try to come to this competition, no, yeah, right? Gotcha. So, yeah. so it had to be grouping well. She had to be scoring well, and that's not her only change, too. There it is. She also switched over from a 204 diameter arrow up to the 23s. She went from 3D HVs up to the Victory Tac 23s. That's what she's running this year. Nine. Here we go. So a little bit of a door opening here for Fawn. Wow, so just like that, it swung. Gerard shoots a seven. You think right, the door is open for Bjorklund, and all of a sudden she follows up with a seven. That's right. So now one point. And easy question. All right, so you're up there now. This is the finals match. Does that make the tension build, or you just feel relaxed shooting against Fawn Gerard over there? Oh, yeah. Of course there's tension. Simple enough. Uh, if anyone wants to trade, switch, it's okay with me. That's okay. Well, all right. Okay, going into our third end, Fawn Gerard holding a 53-52 lead. Now, I will say that there are six arrows left, two ends in regulation. Mm -hmm. 
Something tells me somehow this feels like it might end up in a tie, and then I we go to a shoot-off. I would love to see a one-era shoot-off for here. But for Lena Bjorklund, there we go. she's only six or so That's arrows right. away from uh, becoming part of the crowd I again. We got some noise going on here. Fairbow crowd's getting rowdy. That's what we like to see. This is going to be great. And what you missed was, after that question PJ asked Lena, she turned around, looked at Fawn, and Fawn gave her the sassy look. <laughs> A lot of fun going on up there. One point game. Fawn comes back to full draw, finds her aim, executes. And there we go. What a way to open up this third end, put the pressure on Lena. Ten. Lena responds with a 10. Is the next big trend in Barebow going to be chewing your gum? <laughs> I think so. Oh, Charge been doing that a while. I think so. Looks like we're getting the scores updated here. Nine. There we go. So it's interesting. Fawn's nah, that, first that, arrow is, is still sitting at a 10 on the scorecard. No, I, I mean, it's it, it's on the line in a hole. So Nine. there we we'll go. It's up and upgraded it. to an 11. Yeah. This is great. Very tight match. Fawn's taking her time. Good, strong execution. Little wink of the eye, and it sounds like we got a good arrow in there. Ooh. Maybe that's the way to put pressure that, on. That sounded more like a slap of a shaft <laughs> than it did a broken knock. That's right. Let's see what Lena can do here. Oh, Ooh, and that's going to keep it tight. Here we go. Whoa. One point game coming into the final end. This is the finals match that we were hoping for. Let's go down to the floor. Okay. So Fauna asked Lena, but I'm wondering, do you ever feel nervous? Nope. I didn't think so. That's simple enough right there. I don't know if I've ever seen her nervous. Here we go. That was nice little exchange there from Fawn. I think that was a little bit of posturing going there. You know, you could see kind of. She's so nervous. That's, Come on. that's it. Not, you can't tell by her shooting because she is. No. Pounding the yellow Wells. there. Yeah. The excited. one thing we know about both these archers, even though even if they feel the nerves or they don't feel the nerves, they're enjoying being absolutely. Up here <laughs> There's no doubt. And both of these archers have very uh, elite level coaches in their box. So we have Eric Johnson, obviously, who needs no introduction. We'll see him later in the men's barebow division. And then Paul Helms in Fawn's box. Uh, Paul Paul just is a great shooter. He went deep in the elimination rounds uh, this morning and got knocked out by John Demmer in the very last mm -hmm. match. Mm -hmm. So he was very close to be making the final stage. All right, so the official score is in and is indeed Gerard one point advantage. This is the final end of regular scoring. Let's go, let's go. Can it, Lena hold her title as the defending champ going two years in a row, repeating? That would be three. Lancaster wins in the last four years for Lena. And, and Fawn. Fawn searching for it. Is this her year? Both of these women won it. Let's see what they do here. Final end. I'm so excited, Greg. I'm I'm beside myself. Man. <laughs> yeah. And I mean one point is barebow tie practically. Barebow close. <laughs> barebow tie. It is. Here we go. First arrow. Three left to go. Seven. Oh no. The crowd, you heard it. Let's see if Lena can respond. Put some pressure on. Eight. Eight high, okay. Tied up. There we go, tied, tied up. Match. Let's go. Two more arrows to go. And Lena knows the opportunity that she just missed there. There we go. Season you can see Fawn talking to herself, maybe singing a little bit. A little bit mental exercise there. She needs a good solid shot here. Oh, something's happening here. She's impacting high. Yep. She calls the 12 already, even before she loads her next arrow. Nine. And Lena just keeps the pressure on. Fawn's going to need it. She's going to need to hit this 12 and have Lena throw an arrow here. Is this Gerard's year? Is she going to hit this 12? She would be at a, yeah. She'd be 108 with this 12, which would mean Lena would need to shoot a good arrow. Oh, she missed the 12. Okay, Lena is calling 12. I doubt she's going to go for the 12. She's just calling it. All she has to do is put a six or better to win this match. 
I would assume she's not aiming for that 12. I wouldn't. Yeah. Seven. She went for the 12. Wow. Why did she go for the 12? That's a very interesting move. But she had a buffer. Okay. So eight, unofficially, we're 104-106. Yeah. Yep. All right. And Lena Bjorklund. Okay. She does it again. Congratulations, Lena. Interesting end to that match, Greg. Very interesting. Here we go. Three times in the last four years, Lena Bjorklund, our women's barebow division champion at the Lancaster Classic. Waiting for just official confirmation. All right, our Here we scores go, PJ. are official. Fawn Gerard with a 104, Lena Bjorklund 106. Fawn for winning second place is gonna take home $1,500 from us, $1,200 from Hoyt, $200 from Yost, and your champion, Lena Bjorklund, first place, $3,000 from Gila, $1,000. She's falling for me, she said. We're going to talk to you first. Back to back classic champs, how does that feel? Awesome. As always, in here. Tell us what this, where this fits into your all the titles that you hold. It's fourth in a row. Fourth in a row. Yeah. Third time on the podium, and uh, on the first uh, year when I was here, you didn't have the finals for the ladies. So, right. so. All right. This is uh, this is an adventure. This is also my vacation. So we come here a couple of days earlier to just to walk around in the in Lancaster and to see see the city and meet all these friends we have. You've made a lot of them, Lena, and I can't imagine the classic without you. Congratulations, 2024 Lancaster Archer Classic Barebow Champ. See you next year. See you next year. Give it up for Lena. Outstanding shooting in women's barebow here at the 20th Lancaster Archery Classic from the Spooky Nook Sports Complex. Congratulations to Lena Bjorklund on another victory. You don't want to go anywhere, folks, because coming up next, our final match of the day. We got seven of them coming at you. It is some of the best barebow shooters in the world. You don't want to miss it. Zernzak and I will be back after this.